you've been an LBGTQ advocate for many years. Talk about why that's important to you, why that issue is important to you and where we're at with it right now. Yes, it is. Um, I, I got involved when Proposition 8 passed in California and Proposition 8 said that gay marriage you, you, is illegal in California after it had already been legal. And then they introduced this measure on the ballot. And I honestly think everybody thought, oh, I'm going to vote for Prop 8 and then gay marriage will be legal. They worded it quite craftily so that you're like, oh, wait, what? Oh, oh, shit. Oh, that being said, a awful a lot of money was also put behind making sure that Prop 8 did pass, that gay marriage would be illegal. Um, so I think it was probably part and parcel of both things. Yeah. But uh, I had produced a film, um, financed a film for Dustin Lance Black in 2009, I think. Uh, he had just won, recently won the, the Academy Award for writing the screenplay for Milk. And um, he said, Yardley, Prop 8, it can't stand. We need to do something. Would you meet a friend of mine named Chad Griffin? And I said, yes, of course. So I went and had breakfast with them. And I literally was hooked in five minutes. And so I, we finished breakfast. And Chad, at that point, had partnered with Rob Reiner to start the American Foundation of Equal Rights, which was solely created to overturn Prop 8 in California. And... Um, Long story short, we we did that. We won. It gave a shed load of money in order to help make that happen. Chad was then poached to go run the uh, Human Rights Campaign, which is the largest lobbying group for LGBTQ plus mm -hmm. uh, rights. And I followed him there. And honestly, for me, it's not more complicated than even if someone is different than you, you cannot cherry pick someone's human rights. You just don't get to. I don't give a fuck. Like, you don't agree with how they live their life. That's too bad. You don't get to. And so uh, I, I believe in that fight. I believe in that Do fight. Do you think the Simpsons would ever touch that um, with introducing a character, having Lisa, you know, it's Al Jean said something about Lisa being polyamorous. <laughs> I mean, do you, would you think they would yes, go yes. there? Do you think it would be too um, disruptive to the show? I don't think so. We've said that Smithers is gay. Um, we've had a few gay characters. We had John Waters on several times, and he comes on and plays himself, and or maybe he's played a, a, a fictional character as well, but he's incredible. Um, you know, uh, whether or not... I don't think it would be too disruptive to actually declare, for instance, oh, Lisa Simpson is a lesbian. I do think it's important to remember that she's eight, and that even if I know a lot of my gay friends are like, oh, no, I always knew, I think that they're, at least by their own description, their awareness of being different from their peer group was not so much sexual as it was, I like different things than they do. What does that say about me? So if they were, if they wanted to say Lisa Simpson is, um, a lesbian or she's, you know, non-binary, all good. I think though that you'd have to, I would hope that they would keep it in the context of her being an eight year old, yeah. even as smart as she is, because there's only so far you can push Lisa Simpson's, um, uh, uh precociousness. Yeah. 